Hey guys, Hyrulean here. Welcome to Ask Hyrulean, the show where you send me your problems and I'll try to do my best to help you out. Um, so today I've posted on my personal Facebook and on the Whovian Hyrulean Facebook um, asking people if they had any problems. I got a few responses on there and I went out and messaged a few of my friends to see if they needed any stuff um, and any problems answered and stuff like that and I got a few responses from them. So today we are going to talk about a lot of things, so let's get straight to it. Bam! Here we go. Alright, we have a question here from a person who prefers to go by the alias Potato. So they ask, um, Dear Hyrulean, why are boys who turn you down always trying to get with you? Um, so good question, Potato. That happens a lot in school and life, I guess you could say, where you try to latch onto someone and they just don't want to do it and then they keep trying to latch on to you. Now you see, the short answer to that is teenage angst. Everything can be shortened down to being answered with teenage angst. Um, but I'm gonna give you a bit of a better explanation. Um, so I'm guessing the whole thing behind it is, um, you said that they turn you down, um, so maybe they're like shy to say yes or something. That could be something that's going on, you know? I mean, I am the official love master here on the Whovian Hyrulean channel, um, but I'd recommend if you want to solve this here problem for yourself, um, maybe ask again. I mean, I don't know if you've asked multiple times or not, but um, if you are still interested and you're not coupled, then I'd recommend talking to them again, and maybe you can make this work and make this a thing. Now, if it's multiple boys, <laughs> multiple, you're going to have a bit of a problem on your hand indeed. Um, for that, I would recommend picking the one who has a car. So there you go. Pick the one that has a car over anyone else because they're the most reliable ones, hopefully. Unless if their car gets broken a lot, then they're probably not very reliable. But yeah, there you go. There's your answer. All right, our second problem comes from a person who prefers to use the alias Pikachu's batteries and they ask, why is high school all drama? Um, so, I went to a Mental Floss article about why teenagers ask, act the way they do, and I found probably the most prominent reason has to do with peer pressure. Um, you know, blah blah blah, parties, blah blah blah, hey guy, you wanna be cool like us? Drink some alcohol, oh yeah! And then you're like, I don't like alcohol, I don't like to drink, um, but, and then, yeah, you get drama because people are like, why aren't you drinking alcohol? We're really cool and we drink alcohol. So then drama starts. And then the drama carries over to people who don't do anything, don't even go to parties and crap like that. So then they're forced to deal with drama. And then it's a mess. So there you go. That's a reason why it happens. But I'm going to tell you how to fix it. Um, so when you're at a party, if you ever get to go to a party, I don't know how popular you are or anything, but if you're ever in a situation where you're being peer pressured and you don't want to cause any drama, I give you a solution. Take it, but don't use it. So, we can apply this to alcohol. Let's say there's a, a guy who walks up to you and says, Hey, I drink alcoholic beverages. You want to be my friend and drink alcohol with me? You can be like, no. Well, you don't want to say anything, actually, because that's not what I'm getting at. But, you, no. In your head, tell yourself, no. Drinking alcohol is lame. What's cool is not drinking alcohol and going home and eating a pack of hubba bubba. So, what you're going to do is you're not going to say anything. You're going to take some alcohol, but you're not going to drink it. You're going to set it down and you're going to walk away. Get that? You getting that? You getting that Pikachu's batteries? Yeah, you getting that? Good. Because that's what you're going to do. You're not. You're going to take it, but you're not going to do anything with it. You're just going to leave after that. Maybe you can dump it out in a sink or something and throw it away or something. I don't even know. Just tell them, just don't cause drama by telling them that you're not going to. Just don't do anything. And if you feel uncomfortable, always leave. Just leave first thing if you feel uncomfortable. Um, and if drama is getting you down, there's a simple solution. Um, sometimes it's kind of hard, but you may need to cut cut connections to people if, if there's too much drama. That's all I'm going to say about that. All right, well, I hope I helped you out, and that'll be it for that question. Good luck. 
All right, so our second to last problem for this episode is by a person who prefers to use the alias last kind. Um, so their problem is they want to know what do you do when someone um, when you like someone but you don't know if they like you back. So this is a common problem, obviously. <laughs> um, it's been a reoccurring theme since the beginning of time for many, including myself, if you believe it. Yes. I've liked someone and not known if they'd like me back before. It's, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but anyway, so the first step in uh, being careful to make sure that uh, you don't uh, do anything stupid and friend zone yourself <coughs> Hoovi <coughs> <Hoovian. coughs> um, is you, uh, you talk to people. You talk to people. You find out if they're in a relationship. You check the Facebook status page. Don't be a stalker on Facebook because that's just weird. Don't like photos from seven months ago and expect them to not care and not think that you're stalking them on Facebook because that's just stupid. But um, So check their relationship status. If they're in a relationship, back the hell off. Don't talk to them. Well, I'm not saying don't talk to them. Be nice, obviously. Treat everyone like you'd like to be treated. That's the golden rule. Keep that in mind. Um, but, I mean, if you're not sure if they like you back, you can talk to them and work it out somehow that's the thing that you can do if you're a bit of a social person you can talk to them you can you confront them about that what <laughs> you can confront them about it and see if they'll talk to you about it um but if they are in a relationship i don't recommend confronting them about that because that would be pretty bad um if you're not a social person and you don't want to confront them about it i guess you could try talking to friends of yours who are also their friends i'm not sure just talk to somebody who's more socially able to talk to them or is like considered their friend or something like that I don't know um, but that's one recommendation another could be um, I guess do something like I don't know maybe ask them out on a date just take a risk just go hey what's going on you want to go out sometime and then they'll be like well, yeah, sure, I've been waiting for you to ask. Or they'll be like, hell no, you're an ugly son of a bitch. And then you'll be like, eh, no one loves me. And they'll go into a state of depression where you think nobody loves you, but in the in reality, a lot of people actually do, and you'll just be like, what? And then, yeah. But just if they do end up not liking you, don't take it personally. Because, I mean, let's be honest here, there has to have been somebody disgusting who liked you before. I know it's happened to me. Um, so yeah, there's your bit of advice. Just take it and try to get a social connection somehow via a friend or maybe just go and ask them yourself. And if that is not an option for you, just try. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it does, then congratulations. You tried, you stood up for yourself in a socially awkward situation. Yeah, you, you held your own. There you go. Congratulations. But yeah. I hope you I hope I helped you out last kind. If I did not, you can always message me and I'll help you out more if you need it. All right, that'll be it for that question. Moving on to the final one. Our final question of this episode comes from a person who prefers to use the alias Clockwork. Yes, Clockwork. You probably know who it is, but that's besides the point. Um so they asked me um to help them with a major problem they've been having for a good while now and it's quite the large problem so this one will probably take up the rest of this episode so I'm only gonna be able to do like four different problems this yeah anyway um so you see he's gotten himself locked in a very 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 hard situation um I guess you could literally say he's stuck between a rock and a hard place um cuz apparently according to people around him um, which I've been talking to people around him he's been rude um manipulative and not a very truthful person um so i'm just I, I don't really have the slightest clue how to help him right now but i've been thinking a little and i have a few things um to to help him i mean this is quite the major problem but anyway enough explaining um so as far as i can tell he's done a lot of things and um in your current state, clockwork, um, you have people believing that you are being their friends to take advantage of them, and you need to be very, very careful. Um, 
just don't do anything that'll set them off more because you do not want this to split. This is a big deal if this splits. Um, so in its current state, one of the people that I talked to said that they thought you were being manipulative um, and trying to take advantage of them and you were lying. Um, so what I would recommend, this is probably one of the few things that I'm going to be able to recommend easily to you. Um, I'd recommend you need to write a well-written, well-thought-out apology letter, and you need to find a way to get it to them without talking to them. Um, and you need to give it time as well. Time is important in these kind of things. Um, so, the apology letter needs to include everything you did wrong. You need to say everything you did wrong without help from me, without help from anyone. You need to decide upon yourself what you did wrong and you need to list it and make it known that you know what you did wrong and what you did was wrong and that you are regretful for what you did wrong. Um, so after you've listed everything you've done wrong, you need to list um, why you're regretting making those decisions and why those were the wrong decisions to make. Um, whether it be like, uh, I don't know, like just telling them um, why what you did wrong was wrong, basically. Um, for example, let's say you stole someone's pencil. Um, so you'd start out saying, I'm sorry I stole your pencil. Stealing your pencil is rude because you need it to write your homework assignments. Take that as an example. So you need to explain why it's rude or what you did wrong, why it is wrong. Um, and then the third part, the third part to your predicament um, it needs to be a formal apology um, and why and how you're going to prevent it in the future. And it it's kind of has to be a summary of the whole thing as well. Um, and this is really important. If you, if you don't do a good job, then it's going to be pointless in the end. But it needs to be a decent length. Um, I'd recommend one to two pages front and back. Um, but it's going to be important either way, so you're going to need to find a way to make it work. Um, and for that matter, um, let's see. I just be careful that you don't say anything in the letter that insists that they were the ones at fault. You need to take full responsibility for this, and you need to try your best to attain for your attain for your wrongs and you need to make sure that you don't make them any more angry at you than what they already are um because if you do that it's just gonna not even work and this will all be pointless um so yeah i really hope this works out for you i'd hate to see a big part of our our group of friends here stop being a part and um just in case if you're listening to this person that clockwork has offended, um, you need to, <sighs> I'm asking you from the very bottom of my heart to at least attempt, make an attempt to, um, show some sign of forgiveness and show a bit of mercy because, um, as far as I can tell, his life is pretty much effed right now, um. And don't take this as like, uh, oh yes, I'm just going to go on and on about why you should take him back. Because I'm not. I'm literally going to cut this off here very soon. Um, but please show a little mercy to him. He's really going to try, hopefully. If he doesn't try, by all means, don't even, don't even, I just, I'm trying to convince him here with this that he should try. And if he doesn't try, I wouldn't even take him back. Because... As far as I've heard, he's done some things to make you very upset. Um, so yeah, there you go, Clockwork. I hope this helps you out. Um, I've been talking for quite a while now, and I'm probably going to need to just take a long two-hour non-talking thing after this because I'm running out of breath. Um, but anyway, guys, thank you for watching this first episode of Ask Hyrulean. I'll definitely do more of these. If you guys want to get your own problems um, posted on here and I can respond to them. Um, you can comment below. You can find us on Facebook. We have a Facebook page now, Hoovian and Hyrulean. It's, uh, facebook.com forward slash Hoovian Hyrulean channel. Um, 
and you can also email us but we don't check that as often there's tons of ways to um message us just find a way and you could probably be featured on the show um so yeah anyway guys thanks for watching i'll see you all next time bye bye